Hello everyone, it's System, and this is Astroblog. Hope you're all well, having a busy day. I myself, well, I'm having a great one. So let's get back to this pack here. Just uh, kind of push forward. So in between episodes, I haven't done a ton. I did go ahead and, uh, I guess, grab a whole bunch of levels and things uh, out of this. Uh, just keep, kept on uh, running Polymer, right? So I went ahead and grabbed the last two levels of Nanobots. I grabbed the Attack Boost, four levels of that, which gives us 30% um, more damage with my melee weapons. Then I grabbed the Flash Cooling, which gives it a chance to automatically cool down 20% when you overheat a weapon. And the Sonic Shockwave. This one's a little weird, though. I'm not 100% sure how it works. You can see there I have it activated with Semicolon. I've had it light up a few times and use it, but it's not consistent. Like, I, I know you have to be around an enemy, but I'm not sure what makes it so it will light up and what won't. And I also got night vision, so that's pretty cool. So we're looking pretty good there. I also went up to, um, I got one of high jump. I need to grab another one. And then I got the fall damage one as well. So we're looking pretty good in skills. So that is pretty awesome. Uh, to pick the skills too, you'll have to set the hockey because there was a conflict. But if I want night vision, for instance, I would just do that. And I believe it's X, right? No, what is the uh, key I have it set to? I think it says uh, actually on the skill. So back in here. No, it doesn't say here. <laughs> oh, it was semicolon, right? Yeah, there you go. Hit semicolon, turn it on, turn it off. I find that I'm running out of hockeys, like good places for hockeys for this pack. I just have so many hockeys now uh, for things I want to use that I'm actually running out. I'm using things like semicolon. But anyway, that is that. That is pretty cool. Hopefully at some time we'll see the shockwave. Uh, also in between videos, I went ahead and set up two more machines here. This is, uh, there was quest assigned to both of these, but uh, really easy set up. This is the Igneous Extruder. I have this actually making me obsidian. So as the lava slowly comes in, it uh, just takes the water and lava, combines it together, and makes us obsidian. Uh, you can make other stuff too, so like granite, like a bunch of junk, <laughs> realistically. Except for maybe basalt. It's a pretty good uh, building material. You can get stone out of this too, actually. But uh, not really worth it. But anyway, I have that one set up. And I also set up this one. This is the Glacial Precipitator. Basically, it makes any, any kind of snow you want. Anything you'd want, really. So... I just have them both exporting out the top, so that is pretty easy. I'm just kind of building up on ice now, because why not? But the back of it to automate this was super easy. Uh, let's go ahead and grab a jetpack here, I suppose. Something like that. So I just have a lava generator here going inside the igneous. Then just one line going into both with water. So it isn't particularly quick, because <laughs> the water is actually made pretty slow. But over time, will get me everything I need. In time, we'll be able to get a obsidian generator. But uh, yeah, I need to visit Mercury, I think. And uh, that's a ways off. So uh, I needed it for hardened glass mostly. So that is a thing. I didn't really need the snow one yet. We may need it at some point. <laughs> I just did it because I had to make it anyway. Uh, over here, we got a setup we're going to do. We're going to do another power setup. And uh, I need to grab a couple more things here. Grab a hopper real quick because I know I'm going to need that. Sweet. And uh, we're also going to grab some silver that I think I have in here because I think I'm going to need that as well. Silver, silver, we should be good. So what we're going to do is do another power setup. And I would have done this one originally if I knew about it, but I did not know about this one. This one is actually pretty crazy. Let's see if we can actually grab 12 of those. We can. We're going to do the innovation dynamo because there's a really easy way to get kind of, uh, I don't want to say, well, I mean, it's just free power. You'll see. I mean, it's even better than lava. It's, it's awesome. <laughs> anyway, I can't really explain it. Better off showing it. We're going to use Xnet again because why not? What are we out there? Right of Electrum. Uh, let's see here, Electrum, there we go. Go ahead and get at least, I figured about 12 of these, so I looked at the space and was like 12 would fit here. But anyway, let's go do that many there. Then we're also gonna need the coils, right? I kind of forget about the coils, so let's see here. These ones, increases output. These are the ones we need. Uh, we're gonna need more silver. I'm gonna get silver going right now. Um, we'll set this up, then I'll go do the silver. So I think that's pretty much everything we need for the initial setup. Uh, these should produce 240, just like the lavas, but uh, it's actually going to be easier. Easier than lava. Anyway, let's head up here. Go ahead and start this. We're going to need to set up controller. I'll go ahead and put that somewhere. Doesn't really matter where that goes. Need to prime that with power, too. We'll probably just use this energy cell, because uh, that is good and easy. Something like that there. That's the front, so I want the back, right? Back would be their output. Did that get power? It's getting power there right now. Awesome. Then we're going to want to, why do I have a crucible? I don't need a crucible for this. I need, <laughs> uh, whatchamacallit, just a drawer, right? Let's go ahead and grab a drawer here. May have one in my bag. Yeah, I do. Sweet. 
And uh, we're gonna go and set this puppy up here. And uh, we're gonna power these things using redstone. So the innervation dy dynamo usually is used to drain power out of items, but there's an option to take redstone and use it. And this thing actually produces blocks of redstone. So, I mean, it's infinite easy power, right? So that is kind of what I'm going for here. Well, it's not infinite, but it's free. It's infinite as much as you don't have to worry about very much what it's uh, coming out of redstone generators. And uh, the recipe on these generators is really nothing at this point. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely a good way to do it. And like I said, if I knew about this early on, I would have used this as the power source instead of lava. But I did want to show it here. Let's go ahead, kind of break that down. Then we'll just go ahead and grab uh, my dynamos. And there we go. And I will probably have to spin these thing around. But uh, that's not too big a deal. Oh, uh, one got misplaced. Also need a crescent wrench. Grab you. And sweet, awesome. Let's go ahead and just pop that last one down. And hopefully, oh, it's only one hit. Nice, to spit it around. <laughs> Could need that torch too, because I just made it dark, didn't I? There we go. So, all we're gonna have to do here is grab all these advanced connectors. I'm just using all advanced this time, because um, I'm, it's it, uh, interpearls. They're not expensive anymore. <laughs> so that's basically why, just being lazy and wasting my resources. Wanna get these upgraded too. So let's go ahead and do that. We need you, you. Listen to all the noise, man. <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and get that done. Then we'll have to do the second set, and then I'll have to come back with the coils later. But, uh, that's not a big deal. I just want to get it set up first, then we can get them upgraded, and uh, move to something else. So anyway, that is the setup here. You can see how much space we have here, and how easy this is to do. I mean, we already have 180 blocks of redstone, and uh, yeah, that's pretty insane. So let's go in here. Let's kind of get this set here. First channel will be... I guess an item channel for this one. So we'll create that. We're gonna do, I guess these first. Let's go and create channels. Um, actually, let's do these ones first. <laughs> do that. This one will be an extract. The side doesn't matter because it's the only thing it's gonna have to do. So we'll just leave that there. These ones here, I'll probably go to, which side? Let's go up just so they're all the same. Then we should be able to hit this little copy this to the clipboard button, which I always forget about. So we could just do here and paste it, I believe and not have to worry about uh, doing them all independently. <laughs> and I don't think I did it with the last setup there, so uh, it'll make things a lot faster. So we just paste those settings and they should be the same for everyone. And uh, that's all we need. Let's kind of do the last few down here. Go paste that one and paste that one. This one here, uh, what do we need here? That, no, that one will need a power channel. Let's go over to Xnet Energy. And uh, yeah, that's the one we want, right? Xnet Energy. Create a second set of channels here. So that's cool. And then I guess all we really need is to pull the power. So we'll just go uh, create and uh, we'll do an extract on this one. Then we'll do copy again and uh, just paste. All crazy and willy nilly. <laughs> there we go. Let's go all the way down, get them all done. This paste uh, setting is great. I don't know, I think you can copy whole channels of some way too. But uh, I don't know if it's that other copy button. Copy this channel to the clipboard, yeah. So if you want to move a, a, a setup, you could just kind of copy the whole uh, entire channel and then paste that later on as well, which is pretty sweet. And then, no, this one here is not going to be that. This one's going to be insert, just so the system powers itself. Uh, I usually like to take a battery though and uh, do an insert on that too, because every once in a while I found that these run out of power because it doesn't like always pull the power how you want it to, I guess. So it prioritizes the power being pulled out of these before it feeds it into that. Uh, we might be able to change the priority on this actually. Is there a way to do that? Priority one. Okay, so if that's pro proper, this should get powered first before the power goes anywhere else. So that'll actually work. So I guess that's pretty much everything except for we're actually going to pump the power of this thing with a plug. And it's going to be all of our wireless power pretty much. I'm just going to use this setup. So go ahead and do that. And I'll have to set up one more channel here. Oh, I got one more thingy too, right? <laughs> thingy. Anyway, this really matter. Let's go here. I guess we could just do here. Up on this one equals... Are we using up? Oh no, up won't work. Let's do this. Let's just do another connector. I could do it through the same connector, but uh, it gets a little more confusing. So let's just go up here, throw a connector, go ahead and turn it on to power. And then we just need to tell the power to go in there. So we're just gonna go ahead and find that one. And that one will be create and insert. Yeah, that should be good right there. And the direction shouldn't matter. So basically after the power goes here, so to try to power this first, it should go into there and end up being our wireless power, which is awesome because now we get a whole bunch of power. <laughs> and 
And right now they can only do ADR half a tick. Uh, they're actually producing nothing. Wait a second. Oh, I messed something up. What did I do wrong here? I did something completely wrong. Extract on this, right? Insert up. Huh? These ones are lit up. Oh, they, uh, did one not have it? Did I mess up one? Is it just one of them? No, it's three, four, five. Maybe it's uh, not doing like round robin on the extract. I figured it just did that by default. Okay, I went ahead and made our coil, so I have those all here. But I finally got this one working. I don't know why it wasn't working, to be honest. Uh, but I went ahead to the channel, just set it to round robin, and uh, everything seems to be working fine right now. So that is cool. But uh, they're producing power, man. They're doing their thing. And each one of these is worth 640k RF. So, I mean, that is awesome. And uh, even with them all full, this number is still going up. So that is actually perfect. And uh, all we really need to do is go ahead and upgrade them all. And every one of them now is going to be up to uh, 240R. So that is almost 3,000. So that isn't too bad at all for really no work at all. So I wish I did this one first. This one's actually pretty silly because one of these can sustain so many. I could probably still do, you know, <laughs> another row of them. It'll probably be fine. As opposed to this one, I just need more and more and more crucibles, right? So especially as I upgrade these ones, I don't think I'd be able to keep up where I can upgrade these ones further and that, that might keep up. If not, I just have to add one more. So that is pretty cool. So the next thing we're gonna do here is go ahead and do a setup so we can get to, I guess, Flux Electrum. Uh, flux Electrum is pretty cool. It's gonna make it so we can get this a Flux Infused Bow. So it's gonna be pretty awesome. Uh, in the process, we'll pretty much have a setup to get a Signalium. Uh, Signalium is really cool because it's going to make it so we can get to much better uh, flux ducts and stuff like that. So these flux ducts here, I believe, are 16,000 RF a tick. Then you also have this variety here. So you have one for a fluid duct and a item duct. And they can move 4,000 RF and they can um, do the things and stuff, which is move it in the same, I guess, tube. They move RF and liquid in the same, same cable, right? So it makes for more compact automation, which is awesome. We also need to make these flux crystals. There was one other item. Where is it? Oh, yeah, I need to make this obsidian rod. So let's go grab one of you. <laughs> Do that. Just try to grab everything uh, kind of at once here. Go ahead and grab a couple of you and then throw this in there. There we go. That should get crushed down. Sweet. I already had and already went ahead and made all the machines here. The only really new one, I think, is the induction smelter, which is really easy to make. But uh, yeah, it's pretty cool little machine. It has a lot of uses, actually. But anyway, let's go ahead and grab our magma crucibles. Oh, I actually had that one down, didn't I? Uh, we're gonna put one like right here, then another one up here. We're gonna do two, because while we're doing this, we might as well set up for Resident Ender, which is a setup I haven't had yet, but I need it all the time for our transporter. Uh, transporter. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and do that as well. Anyway, let's do that and that. And one of them, we might as well throw redstone. The other one, we might as well uh, go ahead and throw some, what you call it there, Ender Pearl. Let's go ahead and do that. I wish we had the mod that made, uh, makes it so you can actually stack into Pro 64. I really like that mod. Anyway, we're going to go ahead and set the sides in these things. So let's go ahead and clear everything. We're going to do a uh, output out of that side. So that is where the transposer is. Then possibly a input on this side because uh, that'll handle that. This one here, we're going to throw, I think it was four of these we needed. Let's actually double check here. Two of these crystals because crystals can be made two different ways actually. There's one by combining it with the bucket. But if you do the transposer, it only takes a uh, half bucket. So I'm going to do it that way. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, toss those in there. And I have it totally in the wrong machine. So let's put it in this one. There we go. And every time it gets 500, it should fill up. Uh, these machines are really slow too. So I'm going to go ahead and probably do some uh, kits here. <laughs> Get them upgraded. Should have probably already did this, but this is fine. There's four. Then we'll need uh, four of these ones as well. Awesome. Then maybe two, three, four. That looks good. And probably for those. Awesome. Might as well do the coils as well, right? Let's get them fully upgraded. I'll probably be using these machines a fair amount later on, so it doesn't hurt to have them sped up. This is the dynamo, so that's the machine one. I always mix up which coils which. Uh, how many of these would we need? Eight. Let's do that. And we should be able to just grab them. Sweet. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, get everything upgraded here. Probably should have did one for... I probably won't do this one right now. Here's what we'll do. Cause just because I don't want to run back and do it again. I'm going to save one for the induction furnace because I'm going to be using that in a second. There we go. But I will go back and upgrade that one as well. I'm going to throw the induction uh, furnace there because uh, we're going to need that. There we go. 
then we should be able to go ahead and grab the augs. Did I not actually grab them? Oh, yes, I did. There we go. Might as well get them all in. We'll put them in this way so we don't have to listen to it as well. Because uh, <laughs> it's bad enough. There you go. And uh, that should get going there. That should start producing way quicker. So, yeah. Anyway, that gives us our four crystals. Next thing we need to do is the actual flux electrum. I kind of forget what it is here. It is a silver and a gold. Silver and gold. I have to remember here. Silver, one, two. And then we got gold. And I have this copper and the silver set up to do the actual signalium. So it's kind of this recipe here, which I'll go and do later. We don't need that stuff right now. I also need a bucket though. Do I have a bucket? We have one. There we go. Sweet. And uh, grab you. And uh, then we should be able to go ahead and craft this, which is pretty cool. Let's go ahead and get you out of there and see if we can actually just make the actual blend here. Sweet. Oh, did I not grab silver? Boom. And then boom. There we go. We've got four of it. We should now be able to run that through this here. So this is the induction smelter. It's going to require sand and the flux uh, electron blend. And that's going to get smelted down, turned into the flux electron uh, ingots there. And uh, that is pretty amazing. So let's go ahead and grab you. And uh, we should be able to pretty much make everything. I have that. Oh, I need to make the rod, right? So let's go ahead and grab this pulverized. And I think we have all the stuff. So to make this, we need some string. We need one of these fancy whatever kind of rods they are, which I forget what it was. It was this right here, right? What? Oh, I have to make the rod first, right? <laughs> I'm derping, man. Let's do you. Go ahead and see if we can actually make the obsidian rod. There you go. And see if we can actually make the bow. That's cool. You also need the quiver, so we'll go ahead and probably just grab that. Uh, what am I missing there? Arrows? I thought I had arrows. Maybe I have them in here to keep them out of the system. Yeah, there they are right there. There we go. And uh, just that and that. And then grab the actual quiver. So this thing is pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy all around. And it, uh, yeah, it's pretty powerful. It has this little option here and hit V. It makes a big sound and it powers it. You can do that with a quiver as well. And uh, these things get pretty crazy pretty fast. You notice that they have a bar for power there. Uh, let's go ahead and equip our jetpack really quick. And test this puppy out. So I can go to say this guy over here, say, I don't want you to exist anymore. And it just does a ton of damage. Has this explosive damage. And yeah, it's just pretty crazy. I think it can blow up um, entities though. So I mean, it can destroy drops. So you have to be a little careful with that. But this weapon is better than pretty much anything else we can make. So it is just all around awesome and really cool. Yeah, I think I think it'll blow that up. Is it gonna do that? Oh, okay. I thought it blew up entities. I know for a fact I've blown up entities before. Oh, did it do it there? Yeah, I did it there. Yeah, I accidentally killed one of my patrons. Uh, I didn't accidentally kill them. I killed them on purpose on one of our servers. Uh, but then I, I like kept shooting with the bow and I had a crazy enchant on it, which we're going to do in a second. And I just kept firing and uh, yeah, destroyed all his items. I had to give them back. So in here, this is a cool little item. This is called the advanced uh, enchantment table. So if we go to, what is it here? Uh, I can't even remember. It's, it's like enchanting plus or something. What is this called here? Yeah, enchanting plus. Not that big a deal, really easy to make. The only thing you really need is an ink sack, which is any difficulty. But basically it lets you apply um, enchantments, any enchantment that can go onto something just via this table. You don't have to actually do any enchanting, but it's gonna do it all. Over here, it tells you the experience it's gonna need. So if I told it I wanna have, and this is one we want, multi-shot five, we need a thousand experience. And we are gonna do that one. I'm just hoping we have enough experience. Okay, we'll see here in a second. Because I'd also like to add power five. Because <laughs> uh, why not? And affinity we don't need because it already runs off power. That's probably all we need off that. Maybe holding. Holding is going to make it so uh, it can hold a lot more power too. So maybe we'll go with those three. That is a uh, thermal um, uh, enchantment. Yeah, I think that's all we really need. Let's uh, go ahead and see how much experience we got here. Each one of these give us 20. We may have enough for this. <laughs> we'll see here. So go ahead and start using these things. Actually, you can check them right click and use the whole stack. Someone told me that yesterday, uh, and I totally didn't use it. Does it tell much? Uh, tell you how much experience they have? No, it doesn't either. Oh, huh. it'd be nice if it told you how much it had. Oh, we can get a. I totally forgot about that. We need uh, bookcases. Let's see here. How many books can I make? Book. Yeah, I think we can get a discount too to make it cost less. Let's see here. No paper. Let's go ahead and see how much paper we can make. There we go. That's one option for paper. Where's our other paper option? This one. <laughs> Let's go do that and uh, see how many books we can actually make here. 
24. How many bookcases? I'm just curious. I don't care too, care too much about the experience because I could just make it infinitely basically. Uh, but I'm pretty sure we can, can just kind of go like this. There we go. There we go. And maybe one up there. Then go ahead and break this thing real quick and test it out inside this and just see how it works here. So we're just going to do that. Sweet. And see if there's actually a discount now. Yeah, 8%. I believe you can get that up to 30. So I'm not really that worried about it though. Like I said, uh, we're just gonna go ahead and do the stuff of things. Uh, where did my bow go? Oh, it's actually in there. I'm such a derp. Okay, let's go ahead and grab our actual ones we want. We want multi-shot five, absolutely. I may come back for holding because we can add more later on, but uh, multi-shot five and start with power. There we go. So that's 1200. Do I have enough for that? Click to enchant. Yeah, there we go. So we actually have a bow now <laughs> with uh, multi-shot five and power five. And if we went and tried this out now, it actually shoots five arrow arrows at once. So it's utterly and completely ridiculous. <laughs> anyway, let's do that and that. I guess there are only really two more chance I want, so let's get them. Holding, we should be able to get no problem. So we'll grab holding four, so let's do that. And then this one, probably holding four as well, right? So that's all we really need. Yeah, that's good. Awesome. So everything is enchanted. It can hold maximum power. So a lot more power than normal. Uh, it's only 800 RF per use. I guess that's times five. And this one is 6,400, but we still, we got 960,000. Usually the problem with this thing is that it runs out of power quick, but uh, this shouldn't be a problem. So we have an utterly and completely insane weapon. I think I two, or sh two shot or three shot the um, Ender Dragon with this thing before. <laughs> it's like carpet bombing. It's actually utterly completely ridiculous and a whole lot of fun. I actually didn't kill him. Must have been on the side of it. That creeper just doesn't want to die. I'm not even seeing my explosions. Maybe they have a range there. Hmm. Usually it one-shots everything. What's going on here? Is it doing less damage now that I added? Maybe I'm just not hitting a square of the explosions. And okay, the next thing I want to work on here is this. It's called the Glitch and Fuse Sword. So yeah, it's basically, it's from Deep Mob Larding. It starts off at 10 damage, it can get up to 18 uh, just by killing more mobs. So it has a chance of getting more power as you kill things. Also, when you're killing mobs, you get double data uh, from, you know, the deep mob learning. What is that thing called there? The uh, deep learner. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to have to use this trial here. I also have the trial key and I have a zombie caught. Uh, oh, wait a sec. Wait. Well, this one's already attuned to zombie. Uh, this is tuned to the wrong thing. We're going to have to go grab a zombie. Eh, let's get rid of you. Let's do that. Why does he have a backpack? What, what is this thing? What the heck? That said like, what is it, Blazing Invaders? Huh? <laughs> I'm totally confused. I haven't seen this yet. Uh, what? I have no idea. I know we have to make one of those though, right? Oh, <laughs> okay. Well, that was unexpected. Uh, let's drop that off. That gold ore is actually pretty good. Let's do that. Uh, why am I keeping wood tools? Let's get rid of that, get rid of that. Let's actually find a real zombie, I suppose. I have that on. Oh, it's almost daytime too. Um, it's not gonna matter where I fight this either, I don't think. I would have to, like, you need a 15 by 15 by 10 area. So I'm just not gonna worry about it. I'm gonna fight it in the open, <laughs> which probably isn't the smartest, but it is what I'm going to do either way. But anyway, let's do that. And uh, we're gonna have to go make another key here and actually attune it. So that is what I was trying to do. Um, but I didn't realize, yeah, I shot a skeleton earlier and wasn't even thinking of it. It would have tuned to that. Anyway, let's go and uh, make another key here. <laughs> totally confused, man. What's with that backpack? But anyway, let's go ahead, grab you. There's that there. This one, I guess if I want to do a uh, skeleton later, that's fine. But uh, we'll go ahead and drop a zombie, right? Well, actually, I'm not sure if this has to be in the offhand. So just in, in case, I'll do that. And we'll just kill this guy really quick. There we go. And uh, now if we load the key, key is attuned to zombie. Key a tier is self-aware, fixes speed. Uh, these affixes are like random effects that can happen each round. So basically the trial is like a little battle royale thing where we're gonna be fighting a lot of zombies. There's also a chance we'll get another mob there, um, which is the uh, glitches. So the glitches are gonna drop us material that we can actually use to make the sword. Now later in the pack, we'll be able to use um, those glitches to make a really powerful set of armor, but uh, we can't right now. I actually looked at it here. We go to, I guess, uh, deep. He changed the recipe on us. Can you not do that? I'm actually quite busy. Oh, it's just a little guy. Just a little annoying guy. 
Um, where's that? Let's go at deep. You changed the recipes and made it so you need like these gems, like a blue diamond, which is from more planets. Not even sure where it's from, and a green diamond. So we'll have to get to that at some point. Uh, I don't have to worry about you. Anyway, I think all we do is take the trial key and pop it inside. And why is it not doing anything? It's blocking. What is blocking it? Do I not have 15 by 15 here? Looks to me like I have 15 by 15. I need the grass. Does the grass really be a big deal? Let's uh, clear out the grass really quick. So I cleaned out the grass. That seemed to be the problem there. And it says there are fixes, speed, loot hoarders, and blaze invaders. I don't even know what that means, but uh, we're just gonna go ahead and start it. <laughs> we're gonna almost immediately start getting attacked, which isn't that big a deal, I suppose. Let's uh, kill them really quick. I wanna grab my bow, actually. Let's go ahead and use that, because uh, why not? <laughs> there we go, that's cool. So yeah, each wave, you see there, wave one is seven, wave cleared. Next one apparently is other stuff. Uh, I guess the skeletons is just the symbol, right? Apparently the Blaze Invaders one was uh, just uh, not a big deal. I also turned off the quiver so we don't have explosions right now. So I don't want to destroy entities. But uh, yeah, it's a pretty cool little thing here. Oh, we got a bonus glitch. These are awesome. This is what I was kind of hoping for. I'll get it so we get uh, extra of the actual glitches, which is awesome. Little glitch fragments, right? Uh, can I have this? Uh, that's not the right thing. I got too much stuff in my inventory for breaking all the grass and stuff. There we go. If you don't kill them fast enough too, I think the next wave starts. So that's something else you want to worry about. Maybe that. Maybe you. <laughs> Four to go. So you can see here, it doesn't take too long if you're quite powerful like I am. You just need to deal with all the stuff and things, but not really a big deal. We did get one extra glitch heart for doing this, plus we'll get another three, which is uh, pretty awesome. Let's go ahead and uh, get rid of you. <laughs> I think if you go outside the area too, like I should have marked the 15 by 15. Uh, I think it kind of counts you out and it's like starts it over. <laughs> Something like that. So yeah, I probably should have marked it, but I'm just not concerned about damage at all. Uh, being an Android and with our regen and all that jazz, um, running off power, not having to worry about food. It's really not a big deal. I kind of hit a ore on him. Oh, that must be the loot hoarder thing. So it's like a nice bonus effect. Anyway, there we go. It's all going pretty good here. We're destroying the world. Nothing's uh, going to stop us. <laughs> I notice I'm shooting everyone in the feet. I don't know what's up with that. It's like I think it's going to explode, so I'm targeting the ground. There we go. Yeah, the guy's actually named the loot hoarder. They hold ores. Anyway, there we go. Got two more. One, and it's a mini. There we go. And, oh, I thought that was the last wave. Oh, this is the last wave here. There we go. And the last wave. Looks like we just got a little more stuff, and they're just getting smoked. <laughs> 18 to go in this wave, though. Uh, depending on the levels of self-aware, they'll have different amounts of rounds. So since this one is a max one, it kind of has uh, a little extra, right? Sometimes you only have to do, I think this the base one. I think basic is only like three rounds or maybe four rounds, uh, where this one is the seven and a lot more mobs. Not hard, especially with the zombies. It's not that difficult. Let's go ahead and uh, finish off the last five here. And, uh, we might be just about done. Then we'll get some glitches, go make our sword, and in time I think I'll get really powerful. Like I said, 18 damage. There you go. And collect your reward from the keystone. <laughs> nice thing is too, you get uh, free pristine matters. So I mean, you can get those really easy. Plus the sword I think too has a chance of giving you uh, pristine matters instantly, which is also fantastic. Actually, forget the next part, so we're going to have to look here. I, there's something I have to do with glitches. It might be beat it off a piece of obsidian. <laughs> Let's look here. So you grab these things, drop some uh, system glitches, and there's a way to turn this into stuff and things. Uh, we want to get this here. Unstable glitch fragment crafted by using a corrupted glitch art. So we got that against obsidian. Okay, so that's really easy. Go ahead and grab a piece of obsidian here. Then there's like another step for the ignit. Ignit. So let's do that. Sweet. And just that. Awesome. And uh, we already got 12 of them. Now we need to turn it into an ignit uh, for the last step. So what is this one? This one is, I think we can see it in here. Drop some fragments, lapis, and gold ingots into a body of water and hope for the best. So we'll do that. Uh, we'll need some gold. Do that. Maybe a few lapis. Sweet. And uh, it was in a body of water, so we'll probably need a bucket as well, right? Water might be actually a problem right now. Do I have any water in here? <laughs> I totally forgot uh, my system. 
is draining all the water now. I'm gonna go grab some water real quick. Okay, let's go ahead and throw a bucket of water in here. Piece of lapis, piece of that, and one of those. Oh yeah, that's definitely working. Let's throw in some more. Three, I think we only need two right now, right? That would do a couple more. Nope, maybe I didn't get them in the hole. I got one in there. <laughs> there we go. So you get this cool particle effect, it'll slowly change, and bam, there you go. We only needed two right now. Later on, we'll need it for the armor, so I'll just kind of store that for now, so that's super easy. And uh, we'll go ahead and see if we can actually make the uh, sword here. So let's go back to deep, uh, deep, maybe, deep, there you go. And uh, see if we can make the sword. So yeah, that's the sword. Pretty awesome, pretty cool, and as we kill things, um, it'll get stronger, stronger, so 18 damage. I am curious, though, if we can enchant it. I don't really have the experience right now. I just don't know if it's enchantable. It is. So once I have a whole lot of experience, <laughs> I'll be able to make this thing pretty crazy. Yeah, like that. I give that as well. Uh, maybe some sweeping edge. Maybe some insight. Maybe some leech. I'm just curious how much it's going to cost. This actually isn't too bad yet, considering Vorpal. I could throw that on there. 6,000 isn't even that much. Um, <laughs> I'll be able to make this insane. I don't remember if this thing takes damage, but maybe I'll throw him breaking on there too. Yeah, that's a pretty crazy sword. <laughs> but uh, I won't do that right now. I don't have the 6,000 experience. I don't think I have enough of those things. No, I don't have, I think I have like one stack left. But anyway, pretty cool, pretty awesome. It'll be a really good sword here. We'll be able to power it up over time, make it pretty insane. And uh, yeah, it has nice little extra effects on it. Pretty cool. But anyway, I think I'm actually going to wrap this one up here. So as always, you guys like this video, please hit that like button. If you really liked it, hit the subscribe button. It is always appreciated. Well, you guys all have a good one. See you guys next video. Later.